Tab Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah, thumma amma ba'd. How many of you guys have uh, more than 1,000 friends? Raise your hands if you have more than 1,000 friends. Even though you might say, I don't have that many friends, but I'm sure that you have so many imaginary friends. We call them in the social media friends. This is if you have a social media account, you most likely have so many people following you, looking at what you're posting, listening to what you're saying, watching what you're doing, and you still call them friends. This is the modern day, actually, of imaginary friends. I have a seven-year-old girl, mashallah. Every time she's by herself, khalas. She's very creative. She starts making all these stories, playing with these friends. When she goes to the bathroom, that's awesome. She spends half an hour, 45 minutes in there. Even though she's done, but she's standing in front of the mirror, and she's just making all these stories, talking with all these people, all these friends, and he just like listen from behind the door. She's having fun. And me and my wife will be, alhamdulillah, let her keep doing that, inshallah ta'ala. It's okay. When it comes to the subject of friends and friendship, it's an inevitable reality. As human beings, we've been created to be social. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam, Adam, where was he, jama'a, when he was first created? Where was he? Where was Adam, jama'a? Jannah. I mean, is there anything else better than being in Jannah? It's the ultimate goal people they struggle and they strive for when they're in this world, right? To be in Al-Jannah. But even Adam being in Al-Jannah wasn't sufficient to be there alone. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created his companion. As she was called in the Quran, Sahiba. What's the meaning of Sahiba? Comes from the word Sahib. And what is Sahib? Friend. So you need a friend, you need companionship. You would say, well, alhamdulillah, I'm a loner, I'm used to this, I love to be by myself and so on. So you can say whatever you want to say. But having friendship or actually looking for friendship is, a, is an inevitable reality. <laughs> it's something that we all look for, or we all love to have. But when it comes to friendship then, how many friends do you need to have? What kind of friends? Is that something good to do? Would you like to have all these people around you and call them friends or what? And when it comes to friends, how many of these people you call friends you can really count on when you need them? And these friends that you have around you, are there friends who really tell you what you need to hear or what you want to hear? Are these are the people that you will, you will be safe with them when you have a long journey, whether it's physical journey from one place to another place or in life, going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Friends come in different shapes, different kinds, different categories, different thoughts, different ideas. And when they're around you, one thing for sure that you cannot avoid, you will be influenced by your friends and your friends will be influenced by you. Even if you say, no, 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 alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, I know myself. I'm strong. I have my guards always up. No one can affect me. I always do what I want to do, inshallah, wa ta'ala. You can say whatever you want to say. But again, as human beings, we cannot stop that sense of influence. We cannot. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us share together an emotional, an emotional Wi-Fi. If you guys come into an area where there, are, where there are people around, all of a sudden, you will be influenced by that. You will be connected right away. And let me show you an example. I want you all to look at me right now. Can you guys see me? Okay. <laughs> what happened? What did you guys laugh? Did I make any jokes? I didn't. I just smiled. And because you see me smiling, you just smiled and laughed. I tricked you. Your friends are doing this to you on a regular basis. Subconsciously, you've been affected by every single emotion that people are sharing with you and all around you. Sometimes you watch a movie, right? And when you watch a movie, you start sobbing and crying, even though you're eating popcorn. But why is that? Because you cannot help it. You've been influenced by the emotions being given to you through these scenes. You'll be walking in the street and you see something and you just feel afraid. Or feel the urgency of needing to help. Or maybe you need help, or whatever that is. You cannot help it. As human beings, we are influenced and we're prone to influence as well. So therefore, if you know that you're going to be influenced anyway, what do you need to do? Make sure that the influence source is a healthy source for you. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, uh, the Prophet as a matter of fact in the, in the hadith, in Sahih al-Bukhari, Muslim, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مَثَلُ الْجَلِيسِ الصَّالِحِ وَالْجَلِيسِ السُّوءِ كَحَامِلِ الْمِسْكِ وَنَافِ خِلْكِيرِ The example of friends and friendship, example of two kinds. So you can have two kinds of, 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 uh, of friends, positive and negative friends. The positive friend, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, كَحَامِلِ الْمِسْكِ Like the perfume seller. Well, and the negative friend, he says, like Nafi Khilkir, the blacksmith. So what's the difference here? Hamil al-Misk, the perfume seller, Rasulullah sallallahu says, إِمَّا أَنْ يُحْذِيَكْ وَإِمَّا أَنْ تَبْتَعَ مِنْهُ وَإِمَّا أَنْ تَجِدَ مِنْهُ رِيحًا خَبِيتًا I'm sorry, أَوْ تَجِدَ مِنْهُ رِيحًا طَيِّبًا He says the three things from the, from, from the seller, the, the perfume seller. Whether he gets something for free, or well, you actually, you, you sell, you, they sell you something, you buy from them, or you just walk around and you just kind of catch the, the smell on your clothes, the scent on your clothes. The same thing with good friends. Imma an yuhdiyak. They volunteer. They volunteer the sample of goodness to you. Like when you go you know, in the mall and they have all these cards, they say, could you please, you know, here you go, new, new perfume, they give you these cards to smell them. They have a nice smell on them. Also, they have all these samplers around. You just go in there and just, mashallah, like keep spraying on yourself and then when you leave, just like you walk like a garden. The same thing over there happens. Your friends, they volunteer the nasiha for you. They volunteer that goodness. So they keep giving it to you even if you don't ask for it. Second thing. You might buy. You solicit something from them. Sometimes you go to your friends and you ask them, Hey, can you help me with this? Hey, what do you think about it? Oh my God, I'm doing, going through this. What about, how do I do with this stuff? So you solicit from them the request and because they're good friends to you, they give you the right advice and the good advice. If you don't solicit anything from them, if they don't volunteer any goodness, you know, anything good to you, what is the least you could get from them? Feeling safe around them. Just sitting with your friends, you feel good. That's exactly the, the kind of scent you get when you leave. That you have, alhamdulillah, you could relax just being around your friends. As for the blacksmiths, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the example of the bad company, like being around the blacksmith. If you've ever been there, Jama'ah, you will see what does that mean. If you're around and they're using fire, some of these sparks flying all over the place, they splash all over the place. And if you're, so, if you're close to them, chances that it's going to land on your clothes and it's going to burn it. Or maybe leaving a hole. So you have a fancy jacket or abaya or a thobe or a shirt and you spend so much money on this, mashallah. And then you go there, one, one small hole on the sleeve ruin it for you. And now every time you walk around, you try to hide it. And subhanAllah just like ruined everything for you. Every time you want to put this on again, you feel awkward because there is a hole. And that's the kind of friendship that you have sometimes. You feel awkward around some of these people. And the other example, the Prophet says, If they don't bear your clothes, you come out and you smell bad. Just like when you walk somewhere, you know, the airport. Sometimes actually I stand out outside the airport door uh, waiting for my ride to come. And then there are people smoking. So I always avoid that area because I know when I enter the car, the first thing the guy will look at me goes, um, like you smell, that, smell smoking, right? So, that, so that sometimes I actually intentionally tell the guy that the, the, the person picked me up, he said, listen, I didn't smoke. It was just the guys next to me. Because it will catch bad smell. And people will probably make this assumption about you and the other people that you've been around. So Rasulullah sallallahu he's telling us that what comes to friendship is one of two things. Influence is going to happen, whether you like it or not. But you choose what kind of influence you would like to have for yourself. Are you going to have positive influence or negative influence? Because one day, we will all come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we will remember that my friendship affected my life forever. Rasulullah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَيَوْمَ يَعَضُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّخَذْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا يَا وَيْلَتَ لَيْتَنِ لَمْ أَتَّخَذْ فُلَانًا خَلِيلًا لَقَدْ أَضَلَّنِي عَنَ الذِّكْرِ بَعْدَ إِذْ جَاءَنِي وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ الْإِنسَانِ خَذُولًا In the translation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and the unjust person, the unjust man, will bite on his hand and say, which means out of regret, keep biting on their fingers, and say, without I had stood by the messenger, I wish I stood with the messenger. Oh, woe to me, would that I had not chosen so and so for a friend. Because obviously these friends will influence you in a negative way. And then for it, for it was he or she who had deluded me to reject the admonition, the reminder which had come to me, as shaitan has proven very treacherous to man. You see, when Abu, when Abu, uh, Abu Talib, the uncle of the Prophet wasallam, was on his deathbed in the last moment, he could be rescued in that moment. Rasulullah said, he was trying to convince his uncle in the last moment of his life 
Ya Am, Kalima, just one single word. Please listen to me. Please listen to me. Say this word so I could use it for you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. I could help you with it. Just say La ilaha illallah. Who was around Abu Talib? His friends, Abu Jahl and the others and so on, standing there by him. Every time the Prophet is telling Abu Talib, Ya Am, please, one word, just say it. And they will say to him, Are you going to leave the path of your father? Is that what's going to be the end of you? So they keep telling him, Listen, don't listen to him. What's wrong with you? Are you going to listen to him in this moment of your life right now? Like what is going to be the, the, your legacy? So Rasulullah said, Ya Am, just say it. Don't listen to them, just say it. And the people around Abu Talib keep saying, Are you going to say this again? Are you going to ruin your reputation? So what happened with Abu Talib? He at the end chose the path of his friends, not his nephew. He said, you know what, that's it. I'll stay on the path of Abdul Muttalib. I'll follow the path of my father. And he died on this. In a moment that you needed really that guidance, these friends became the bad influence. So the question that we all ask ourselves is, okay, um, how do I do that? How do I get that good influence from people? And how much and how many friends do I really need in my life to get that positive influence? Tell me guys, how many friends do you think you need in your life to have positive influence? How many friends? Ten? How many of you say ten friends? You need ten friends to make that influence. So more than ten? Or less than ten? How about five? You need five friends? Okay. How about three friends? How many of you say one is enough? Okay. How many friends do you have then? You all believe that one is enough, but you surround yourself with an army of friends and imaginary friends. By the way, like I said it at the beginning, even though, even though you surround yourself with whom you call friends, but trust me, the friends you don't see, the friends you don't meet regularly, you know, in person, are those who have the most influence on you. The friends that you follow on Snapchat, on social media in general, and also, also your WhatsApp groups, all these are the friends that have the greatest influence on you. So be careful. Rasulullah says in the hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala wa rda, inna man nas ka ibn mi'a la taka tajdu fiha rahila. That people are like ibn mi'a, like 100 camel. What does that mean when it says like 100 camel? Back in the days when people they used to, you know, kind of count things through camels and all that stuff, that was their culture. These people, they lived in the desert, just to understand the hadith. He says the people are like 100 camel. Out of every 100 camel, you could barely find one that is suitable as a ride. We always thought that all camels are okay as rides, right? No, not necessarily. Why is it so important to have the right camel as your right ride, you know, in, if you live in the desert? Because the desert is a very treacherous environment. Very, very dangerous terrain. And people, they survive in the desert through what? Going from one area to, to, to another one with, with, the least, with the least resources. Water, food, and so on. Now imagine... If a, if a person chooses just any camel to go from one place to the other one, and in the middle it just gets stranded. Like if you want to drive, for example, from here all the way down to Texas, for example, where I came from. It's warmer there, by the way, just to let you know, Yanni. So if you remember, you want to drive from here all the way down to Texas, and you just have this crappy car. It's 1980, whatever, and then you just could barely actually run from here to the next neighborhood or next block. And you still you take your chance and you drive all the way down south with this car. What's happening if you drive maybe for 10, 15 miles outside of the city limit? It'll break down. The same thing with this for them. Alhamdulillah, we have trouble A to call to help you and save your life, right? There, they didn't have that. After the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they depend so much on their camels. So... The Prophet ﷺ is saying, it's well like one camel. All these people around you, they're acquaintances. You could call them friends if you want to. But how many of these friends can you really count on them to help you cross the terrain? The terrain of this world and this dunya to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This life is just like this desert. And you need a trustworthy ride to get you from point A to point B. And that trustworthy ride could be only one. And if you have ten then you're going to get actually distracted. Even though if this one right keeps telling you, this is the way, everybody tells you, no, we're going that way. You want to come with us or not? And with, under pre-pressure, most people, they go with nine. They don't go with one. So what do we need to do 
in order for me to have that positive influence, inshallah. I'm going to share with you seven points, inshallah, azawajal. So get ready for these seven points, inshallah, ta'ala, on how to have that, how to influence the friends around you and have that positive influence for yourself as well. And under each one, I'm going to give, inshallah, a couple of action items, binillah, azawajal. So the first one. To have positive influence and influence other people. The first thing you need to know. Number one, number one, have a positive attitude. Have a positive attitude. How many of you guys have friends who are always negative? Like every time I would do something positive, ah, come on, no, don't need to do this thing. I have a paper to submit. Who cares? Uh, let's go do this and no, let's watch the movie. Positive attitude, they're always negative. Who cares? Who's going to listen to you? Who's going to watch this stuff and so on? SubhanAllah, every time you do something right, they always influence you to do something that is completely wrong. So what do I do in this case? If I, have a, if I don't have that positive attitude, I'm going to become negative like them. I will be influenced again. Remember the big smile I gave you at the beginning? You guys all giggled and smiled. Now I want you to look at me again. Can you guys look at me? Okay. So if I look like this, you kind of like feel a little bit, you know, different. Same thing, look at the children, babies, when they see you smile, they smile, when they see you frown, they cry. Why? Because you transfer those emotions to them. The exact thing happens with friends who are around you. So make sure to stay, inshallah, to a positive, with positive attitude. How do I do that? I have two things to suggest for you, inshallah. Number one, and I know it's easier said than done, but I'm going to have to say it anyway. To keep a positive attitude, number one, you need to submit yourself to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what does that mean when it says submit yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Always look at the big picture. Bad things happen in your life. And they will happen in my life and your life. This is part of the test. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us in the Quran? وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَيَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا You perhaps dislike something and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put so much khair for you in there. You would dislike something. But there is so much good in that thing. So remember to always look at the big picture. That will help you, inshallah ta'ala, have positive attitude. The second thing I want you to do to keep positive attitude, jama'ah, which the experiment we did earlier uh, today in the morning. Smile. Always smile. This is a big conference right now. You guys are going to be running, you know, running late. You missed the opportunity to attend this lecture. You know, there's a long line, you know, just to get your food or your cup of coffee or this and that. So you're going to get grumpy on every scale you can imagine. Even when you go to the, to, the, to the elevator, just to go to your room is going to take you forever. You're going to get upset. Here's my advice for you. Smile. And keep smiling. Because, wallahi, we need it. I have a bad day too. So why do you have to make it worse for me? Let's smile and share with together and show this kind of attitude, the positive attitude. Rasulullah sallallahu they said about him, Kana akthar nasi tabassumam. The most smiling person you can imagine. Anas radiallahu anhu who served the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa for 10 years, since he was 10 years old until he became 20, 21 years old. He said every time the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa I met the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he would smile in my face. For 10 years, at all these ages basically, 10, 11, 12 teenagers, you know, mashallah, young adult, the Prophet always smiles in his face. Why is that? Because I really need that smile. Because it will make me feel good, make me feel positive, and actually brighten my day after having a very difficult you know, experience and so on. So let's have a positive attitude, inshallah. And when you smile towards your friends and your friends, you will make their life better, and in return, they'll make yours better, inshallah, as well. Number two, be original and lead by example. What does that mean? One of our biggest problems with, with, the, with friendship and, and companionship is what, Jama? Peer pressure. And what is peer pressure? Simply, you don't want to stand out in the wrong, decision, in the, in the wrong way. But what, is, what defines wrong from right? That's the problem. As a, as a believer, I need to stand out, inshallah, in the most positive way, in the right example. So be original. Rasulullah says in the hadith, لا تكن إما. Don't be imma, don't be a copycat. When they do something good, you do good. When they do something bad, you do bad. No, don't, do be, don't be that person. He says, لا تكن إما إن أحسن الناس أن تحسن ونساء وأن تسيو. That if they do good, you do good. They do bad, you, they do, you do bad as well. قال لا ولكن وطنوا أنفسكم. Which means try to educate yourself. You know, learn. Try to train yourself. If they do good, you do good. If they do bad, avoid doing it. Like stand out to be that, the person who always does, does good. So make sure to be original. And how do I do that? Number one, learn to say no. Learn to say no. And by the way, subhanAllah, no 
is probably one of the first, if not even the first word we we'll learn when we're kids and little kids, right? Remember the little kids, what is, what is the first thing they learn? No. Why is that? Because that's what they hear from you the most. <laughs> little kids, they touch something, nope, don't touch this. They want to grab, no. Can I do this? No. So what do they learn from you? No. How come when we become adult or become teenagers, it becomes the hardest thing to say? After it used to be the easiest thing to say. Subhanallah. Shall we, exp shall we exercise this together, Jemaah? I want you all to say it together. No. no. Say it again. No. Very good, right? Now let's say, it, let's say it very loud. How about that? So you can feel good about it. Say it. One, two, three. No. Awesome. Feels good, right? Next time something, someone tells you to do something that is not in line with your values, what do you say? No. Inshallah, you can say no, okay? Don't say no, inshallah. Just say no, okay? <laughs> because we know what no, inshallah, means, yani. No, just say no. Learn to say no because it's as important as saying yes as well. That's the first. The second thing to say or to do to be original. Be confident. Just be confident. And how do I be confident? Always, always believe in the right thing that you do. You believe in it. If you believe this is something right to do, then just do it and be confident. And if someone tries to pursue it otherwise, what do you say? No. Remember that. Number three, how to influence, inshallah, positive attitude. Be a da'wah person, which many people hate to do with friends, right? The last thing you want with your friends to be their masha, their preacher. When I say be a da'wah person, you don't have to be a preacher, a jama'ah. No, I'm not saying that. All I'm asking is being a da'wah person is just kind of being that right influence for your friends. How is that? Number one, by shedding light on your friends, you will shine better. Instead of you talking, listen to them. Give them the chance to talk and be the person who listens to them as part of your da'wah, like you become the venting, you know, kind of machine for them. Then listen to them and hopefully you will shine. When you shed light on other people, you will shine, inshallah. When you shine, people, they will be influenced by you. Like, Masha, you're an awesome person. And by the way, when I say listen to your friends, unless they're saying stuff that's going to make you actually go and commit suicide, all right? Because some friends, subhanAllah, they come and they influence other people, they become permission givers. They say terrible stories about their life and their experiences and, and others just cannot handle it. And specifically for teenagers, actually they feel so bad, they go hurt themselves, unfortunately, as a result. So be careful. If you know your friend is saying something that's going to be dangerous for themselves and for you, then hopefully you can guide them to those professionals who can take care of them, inshallah ta'ala, on your behalf. Also, learn to compliment people. Learn to compliment people as part of your da'wah. If someone does something good, acknowledge that. Let your friend know that, mashallah, you look nice today. Alhamdulillah, you look awesome today. Mashallah, you know the word you said the other day, I heard you speaking to that friend, was beautiful. I saw you posting something so good, mashallah, jazakallah khair for this. Be a person who always gives compliments because people, they love really to know that they're doing good. And when they do bad, you let them know that you shouldn't be doing this. Number four. What do I need to do to influence people around me? Live a grateful life and be happy with it. Show your friends that you're grateful for, your, for what you have. Because most of our friends, when we meet together, what do they talk about? What they're missing. What they don't have. What others have posted online. Oh my God, do you see what she said? Do you see what she has? Oh my God, do you see her purse? Do you see this and that? So we're talking about all that stuff and we forget about the blessings that we have. So be a grateful person. And wallahi, when you're grateful, you feel content. When you feel content, that's when you're happy. This is when people start feeling gravitated towards you. Why? Because people, they want to know your secret. They want to know, how come you're so happy? How come you're not influenced by that stuff? Why, why aren't you so upset like everybody else? Because alhamdulillah, I'm grateful for what I have. So how can I be grateful? How can I show my friend that I'm grateful? Number one, live a purposeful life. What does that mean? When you move from point A to point B, there's a purpose. If you ever grab your phone, you grab your phone from your pocket or from your purse, or even when you're driving, if you stop at the traffic light and you want to pick up your phone, what is the purpose other than just wasting time and killing time until the traffic light turns, turns green? What's the purpose? Most of our life today, because of social media, because of technology, lost its meaning and its purpose. So the moment we sit down quietly, what do we do? We grab the phone. We look for distraction. Distraction from what? From connecting with yourself. And that's why when you sit quiet for a few minutes and you start hearing these voices in your mind and your brain, what do you feel? You freak out. 
and you grab your phone just to distract yourself. Hello, that was you speaking to yourself. But we're not used to it anymore. So that's why we freak out from that stuff. So we go and we grab our phones. Le lead a purposeful life. You need to live that pur purposeful life. And also, the second thing, you need to speak about the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let your friends know that you're grateful. So whatever you have, you're happy with it, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Anything they complain about to you, show them how grateful you can be. Yeah, I know you might lose some friends because of that stuff, because people, they need to feel, you know, again, they need to know that they, what they're saying is true. They want to feel uh, uh, encouraged and you feel supported and validated. Even though they need that from you, sometimes, again, like as we need to be confident and stand your ground. Number five, be knowledgeable and share it. What does that mean? You know, a lot of our friends, they act in a certain way because of lack of knowledge or they don't know any better. You're the person who's supposed to be that source of, of, of information for them. You don't have to be the knowledgeable person among them, but you need to be the resourceful person among them. They need the resources. They need to know where to go from here. So you can ask someone, inshallah ta'ala, and help them with that. How do we do this? Number one, learn to be helpful. Really? Do I really need to learn how to be helpful? Yeah, in our time, Allah Musta'an, being helpful is something really bad. It has become something like none of my business because we live in the culture of extreme and radical individualism. Yesterday when I came back, when we were flying in, subhanAllah was very interesting as I was standing. A lady in front of us, she was asking if someone can hand her the bag, which was just right in my reach actually. You know, but I need to stretch my arm a little bit backward to get her bag for her. So she said, can someone please hand me the red bag over there? So I looked, I looked behind you. The guy who was standing behind me was clo much closer to it. He was just standing like this. And everybody was looking at him and just like, is he going to take an action? And you can see the discomfort in his eyes, like, none of my business. Like, you need to wait until your turn so you could pick up your bag. And I'm just looking at this, why not? So I pulled the bag and I gave it to her. And I was pulling the bag. He wasn't happy with it. Like, يعني, he doesn't even want to do good and he doesn't want to encourage doing good, subhanAllah. Be helpful. Learn to be helpful. It's a skill that we lost in this society and learn to be helpful, inshallah ta'ala. Number two, on this point, share and invite them to share. If you know something good, share it with your friends, but not scamming them, spamming them with everything, actually. But share something good that is very useful to them, inshallah ta'ala. For the sake of time, I'm going to go quickly on the last two points. Number six, be accepting and don't judge. Even if your friend does something wrong, don't judge their intentions. Instead, you know what? Help them out to learn from it. Help them out for, to learn from it. Don't judge. Just help them out to learn from this, inshallah ta'ala. How do I do this? Two things. Number one, be forgiving, for God's sake. We lost this, 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 this culture and this, and this habit and this tradition, actually, and this trait. We are so bitter. We don't forgive anymore. Allah Musta'an. So we always, we always jump into conclusion and judgment. Don't judge, be forgiving, and do not judge these people. Again, let them learn from that mistake. And the last point, inshallah, I will share with you is to be compassionate. To be compassionate. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who are merciful, jama'ah. Rasulullah sallallahu says, Ar-Rahimuna yarhamuhumullah. Those who are compassionate, those who are merciful, Allah subhanahu the most merciful will shower them with his mercy. Make sure that you do so, inshallah wa ta'ala. So in conclusion, like we began at the, at the very beginning of this session, we said that you have so many, so many, what, you, what I call them imaginary friends, right? You might be surrounded by 100 people, but how many of these people you can really count on them for your life in this dunya and the akhirah? Could be that one person. If you find that person, hold on to this person. And how can I influence other people you know, around me? If I want to be that, if I want to find that person, then you need to be that person in the first place. You will eventually gravitate people with the same qualities, inshallah wa ta'ala. Learn to be positive and always have that positive attitude. Be that da'wah person that the people they need to be around and, and shed light on others, they will, you will shine. Be original. Don't just copy what they do and what they say. Be grateful, be resourceful. And be merciful to them, inshallah, wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the best friendship in this dunya and the best friendship in the akhirah, Rabbil Alameen. I ask Allah the way He got us over here to, to this, this day to bring us in Jannah al Firdaus al with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.